Welcome back to The Jump and welcome in to Atlanta Hawks coach Lloyd Pierce. Lloyd, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. All good. Thanks for having me. Lloyd, you've taken a leadership role with the NBA Coaches Association. You're heading a committee to figure out ways for you guys to help change happen in your cities. Why is that so important for you guys to get involved in this organized way? And, and what do you think you can do? We have a league that's that's dominated. Um, you know, it's it's very relying on a lot of African-American men. I, I don't know what the percentage breakdown is, uh, but we understand that. And we coach and we lead and, and, and we work with these African-American men on a consistent and daily basis. And, and they have huge platforms of, of followers and, and fans. And, and so we understand and I understand as an African-American coach and here in the city of Atlanta, of all cities, um, you have to understand that. But, you know, I've been enraged. I've had, I've had, a, I've had a, a terrible week dealing with this, but but this isn't new for me as an African-American man or any other African-American man. We, we've experienced this fear, um, this feeling for a long time, but to see it live, to see it on TV, to see it in front of everyone, um, the action was important and the action, understanding that we have to coach these men that have these fears and that deal with these issues, uh, whether they're running, jogging down the street, whether they're uh, getting pulled over for a traffic stop. And so how do we go about helping them if we haven't even had the conversation or identified that it's a problem. And so we wanted to form this committee. I was encouraged, um, blown away by our head coaching response uh, for all 30 coaches plus some to, to join that meeting and really show their vulnerability, the embarrassment that some had, the fear that others had, but really it was a call to action for all of us. Yeah, the idea for this committee came out partly and, and was hashed out through this Zoom call with all 30 coaches. I, I'd love to know a little bit more from you about what that was like, because it sounds like a really, really important conversation. Yeah, you know, obviously a lot of people, it's hard to get everyone to speak and communicate, but ideas were thrown out, stories were shared, uh, emotions were shared. Um, but I think the bottom line is we were all unified in the fact that we needed to issue a statement we needed to be unified. We needed to form a committee and we needed to take advantage of our platform, our positioning, our access, and really start uh, to form a, a way to create change. And, and that's what we're doing. We met again as a committee yesterday. We're meeting again tomorrow as a committee. And it's all about change now. We, we got everyone on the same page. Now, what are we going to do with it? And those are the ideas. We have an email and a text exchange that's going back and forth. I've been on phone calls with all the coaches nonstop. And so we're, we're committed. We're encouraged. We're, we're, we're motivated right now. And, and it's on us. We, we, we put it out there that we're going to um, work to, to create some change in our NBA city. We have 30 NBA cities in, in our country that we can make a huge um, improvement on in terms of race relations with the law enforcement officers in those cities uh, and the terms of the legislation and the things that we can do to create some change there in the hirings of officials in our local and state government. So we have a huge platform and we have a lot of access and we need to take advantage of this right now. We are gonna be following you every step of the way trying to amplify your message, Coach. It's so, so important. Uh, before I let you go, I, I do wanna quickly switch gears and just ask you about the NBA's plans to resume the season. There's a lot of scenarios that have been floated, but most don't include all 30 teams coming back. And that would leave out teams like yours near the bottom of the standings. How do you feel about that? Do you want the Atlanta Hawks to be included in the Orlando scenario? I mean, without a doubt, um, you know, I, I coach of the youngest team in the NBA. Uh, mm -hmm. The biggest thing and the biggest thing we can benefit from is playing basketball. And, and we've been, the game has been taken away from all of us at this point. Um, but if the season is going to resume and, and we're still not a part of it, it, it hurts our growth. It hurts our product. It hurts our ability to to uh, continue the momentum that we need going into next season. Um, I play young guys. I have young guys. They need game experience. <laughs> and so it, it's we need to play basketball. We want to play basketball. We're, we're on our Zoom meetings Thursdays and Sundays and our guys, you know, want to do it. But we also understand, you know, there's so many scenarios and, and we're all anxiously waiting to find out uh, where we sit in that. And then, you know, whatever the course of action that happens, we'll, 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 we'll continue to find ways to get better as an organization with our guys. Coach, thank you so much for your time. We really, really appreciate it. Thanks for having me.